Topic 1.7 is about selecting procedures for determining limits, and Topic 1.9 is about connecting multiple representations of limits. So in the context of an AP exam, those learning objectives look something like this. It will give you multiple different representations of a limit and then ask you some generalized question and say which of the following could represent the function f. Or maybe it would say which of the following um, could not represent the function f, something like that. So in this specific question, we're being asked to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 6, and then we have to determine if that's equal to 2. So if that's true, then, then that means that this function works in the context of this problem. So for this first function here, we have a piecewise function. f of x is equal to 9 when x equals 6, and f of x is equal to this rational function when x is not equal to 6. Now, you may be tempted to use this top part of the equation because we're looking for the limit as x approaches 6, and this one says when x equals 6. So you might want to try that one, but the issue with that is that the limit doesn't ask what the actual value of the function is. The limit just asks what is the y value approaching as the x value approaches 6. So we're actually not going to use this top one because this is when x equals 6. We're going to use the bottom function to determine what it's going to be. So this is a rational function, which means that I need to factor first. Now that I've factored, I see that I have a common factor in the top and bottom, x minus 6. So I'm going to cancel that, but that means that I have a whole at x equals 6. A limit can exist at a whole. So my simplified function is 2x minus 10. And now I just want to show you what this function looks like on a graph to help you understand it a bit better. This is that function. We have a whole at x equals 6. And the reason that we have this point up here is because when x equals 6, f of x equals 9. So we have that point up here. This is not a continuous function because we have a jump up in the graph there. But since we're looking for the limit as x approaches 6, we need to find the y-coordinate of that whole. So let's go back to our function. To find the y-coordinate of the whole, we need to plug in 6 into our simplified function. So we'll do 2 times 6 minus 10, 12 minus 10, which is 2. So that means we have a whole at 6, 2. A limit can exist at a whole. This means that our limit is 2. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 6 is 2. So this could represent the function f. I'll place a little check mark next to number, number 1 because that could represent function f. Now let's look at number 2. This is a table. Let's look at the left-sided limit first. As x is approaching 6 from the left side, it's going 5.8, 5.9, 5.99, the f of x values are getting progressively closer to negative 2. This means that the limit as x approaches 6 from the left side is negative 2. So that one is obviously not going to work because this limit is supposed to be 2, not negative 2. Let's just check the right side though. As x is approaching 2 from the right side, y is approaching 6. So not only do our left-sided and right-sided limits not match, neither of them are equal to 2. So function 2 is not going to work. The last one that we have is a graph. And remember, we're looking for the limit of f of x as x approaches 6. So as I go to 6 from the left side, it looks like my y value is approaching 6. And from the right side, it's also approaching 6. So that means that the limit as x approaches 6 of f of x is equal to 6, not 2. Since this one doesn't work, I will place a little x by number 3. So overall, the only one that works is this first one, number 1. So when I go down to my options, the only one that could represent function f is number 1. Here's another similar question. If the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 does not exist, which of the following could represent the function f? Remember that there are a few situations in which a limit does not exist. One situation is if the left-sided limits and the right-sided limits don't match. Another one is if the y values are going to infinity or negative infinity. And the last one is if the function is oscillating. So if we're taking a look at this first function, we're trying to find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1. If it exists, it does not meet this criteria. But if it does not exist, then we can check it off and say this one could represent function f. These values over here tell us, these are the domain restrictions, they tell us where this is applicable on our graph. 
We are looking for the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1. So negative 1 is less than 1, so we're really just going to be focused on this part of the graph. I'm going to use direct substitution and plug in negative 1 to see what the limit actually is. Because this is a continuous function, I can use direct substitution. So I'll do negative 1 over 2 plus 9 over 2. That is 8 over 2 or 4. So this limit does exist. The limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 is 4. It does not not exist, so we can cross that one off. For this second table down here, I'm looking to find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 because I want to see if it exists or not. So as I'm approaching negative 1 from the left side, I'm going negative 1.3, negative 1.2, negative 1.1, and I'm getting closer and closer and closer to 6. This means that the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x from the left side is equal to 6. Now from the right side, negative 0.7, negative 0.8, negative 0.9, getting closer to negative 1, my y values are getting closer to 6. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of f of x is also equal to 6. The left-sided limits and the right-sided limits match here, which means that the limit does exist and it's 6. Even though the limit exists, we're looking for functions where the limit does not exist. So this function does not meet our criteria. This last one down here is a graph. So this is going to be a little bit easier than the first two. We're looking for the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1. From the left side, y is approaching negative 1 as x approaches negative 1. And from the right side, y is approaching negative 3 as x approaches negative 1. The left-sided limit and the right-sided limit do not match, so that means that the overall limit at negative 1 does not exist. So the only one that works in this situation is number 3. So for my options, I have 1 only, 2 and 3, 1 and 3, or 3 only. And 3 only is the correct one in this situation. Which of the following statements is or are true about g of x? We need to select all that apply. Here we have g of x, which, which is a massive piecewise function. It has three different domain restrictions. So one is for when x is less than or equal to 0. One is for when x is between 0 and 5. And the last one is for when x is greater than or equal to 5. The first thing that we need to determine if it's true or not is the limit of g of x as x approaches 5 does not exist. So since we're talking about the limit as x approaches 5, and this is a piecewise function, we need to look at this part of the function and this part of the function, these bottom two. I'm going to use direct substitution and plug in 5 to each one of these. If they match, then the limit does exist, because in that case we have a piecewise function where the pieces line up at one point. But if, the, if these pieces are not lining up, which would mean these we get different results when we plug in 5, to this function and this function, then the limit does not exist. So I'm going to evaluate the square root of 1 fifth times 5. That's the square root of 1, which is 1. Now I'm going to evaluate this one. 5 minus 9 squared is equal to 16. That means that as x is approaching 5 from the left side, the limit is 1. But as x is approaching 5 from the right side, the limit is 16. Therefore, since the left-sided and right-sided limits do not match, it is true that the limit of g of x as x approaches 5 does not exist. So this one is true. This next one asks about the limit of g of x as x approaches 5 from the right side. And we actually just found this one in the previous problem. It's 16. Because in this domain restriction, we're looking for when x is greater than or equal to 5. That means when we're coming in from the right side of the function. So our limit here does exist. It does not not exist. So b is not true. Statement c states that g of negative pi over 3 equals 1. Now we have to be really careful here because all of the previous questions have asked about limits, but this one actually just wants us to plug in negative pi over 3. So negative pi over 3 is less than or equal to 0, so we're going to need to use this top function for what we're plugging in. So we'll plug in negative pi over 3 to this top function. The sine of 3 times negative pi over 3, that is equal to the sine of negative pi, which is equal to 0. 
So since zero is not equal to one, statement C is not a true statement. For statement D, we're trying to determine if the limit of g of x as x approaches zero does not exist. To find the limit of g of x as x approaches zero, we're gonna to have to look at the left side and the right side because there's a different function on the left side and the right side of zero. So to find the left-sided limit, we will find the limit as x approaches zero of sine of three x. This is sine of three times zero or sine of zero and sine of zero is zero. That is our left-sided limit. For the right-sided limit, we will find the limit as x approaches zero of the square root of one-fifth x. This is equal to the square root of one-fifth times zero, or the square root of zero, which is equal to zero. Since the left-sided limit matches the right-sided limit, the limit of g of x as x approaches zero does exist. It does not not exist, so statement D is also false. For statement E, we're asked to find if g of four is equal to the limit of g of x as x approaches four. To find g of 4, I'm just going to substitute 4 directly into the appropriate function. This is very, very similar to c. I'm not finding a limit. I'm just finding what g of 4 is. Um, to select the appropriate function, I'm going to look for the one where x can be 4. 0 is less than 4 is less than 5, so I'm going to use this function up here. So to find g of 4, I will plug in the square root of 1 fifth times 4, or the square root of 4 fifths. And I'm just going to leave that as the square root of 4 fifths for now. If I need to actually evaluate it later, I will. Now I'm going to find the limit of g of x as x approaches 4. I'm going to use the same function because I'm dealing with an x value of 4. So I'm finding the limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of 1 fifth x. And I can use direct substitution here because this is a continuous function. So this is equal to the square root of 1 fifth times 4 or the square root of 4 fifths. So 4 fifths is equal to 4 fifths. G of 4 is equal to the limit of G of X as X approaches 4. So statement E is true. And the only true statements I wound up with here are A and E.